McDonald. This is my 1963 International Harvester Travelette. I got this from a guy in Col... I didn't even say the right state. <laughs> I got this from a guy in Arizona in 2017 and I bought it sight unseen. I just, I didn't even go look at it. I bought it from pictures off the internet and um, yeah, the guy didn't do a really good job. He had put it on an 87 Chevy Suburban chassis and he did a really bad job. It wasn't even safe to drive. So at that point, I knew I had to put a new chassis on it. There was no getting around that. So I found a frame shop up in Ventura it was about two hours from me. Um, they went to work, they built a really good frame for me, and one thing leads to another, and then you end up airbagging it, and then I put an LS3 out of a, a 2014 Camaro SS. It's got a 6L80 transmission, um, makes about 400 horse. It runs really good, it's got lots of power, plenty of power, exactly what I need. It's a family car. We have three kids, so we're always going everywhere together. So this is the perfect family car. All three kids fit in the back seat. We can go up to Big Bear, we can go to the mountains, we can go camping in the desert. We go everywhere in this thing. It's really fun. It's nice, it's comfortable, it's quiet, and it gets up and goes if it needs to. We don't have any problem going up hills. Um, it gets 19 miles a gallon. So it's pretty good all the way around for everything. Um, That's funny you say it's quiet. We'll see how this audio <laughs> turns out. <laughs> I know, I was thinking about that when you were saying that. When I was saying that. So it was a three year build, two and a half years it took probably, and it's still not done. I mean, is, is an old classic ever done? I mean, I'm constantly tinkering, changing things, modifying, adding things to it all the time. It's just one of those things. I come up with new ideas. There's all kinds of little things that I've done to this truck for the last year that, uh, you know, you won't find on other cars probably. And since I'm a metal fabricator and a sculptor and I make recycled metal art, I try to incorporate that into my builds. So there's a lot of artistic touches on this thing that you probably don't see on regular trucks. And, um, and I enjoy it. That's fun. That's the best part. Uh, it's a hobby and it's so much fun. I get such a kick out of driving this thing. I love working on it. Everybody loves driving it. It's one of those hands-on cars. Everybody that wants to look at it at shows or whatever can sit in it. They can drive it. They can jump in the back. They can sit on the roof. They can do everything. Kick the tires. Kick the metal. They can do anything they want to it. It's a hands-on car. That's it. It's just, it's supposed to be that way. Yeah, do you want me to clarify that? <laughs> I don't know, there's people hey, gonna see this video and go, oh, I, I can, wanna I drive, can it. drive it. <laughs> They're gonna be texting me, I wanna drive it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I encourage people to get in, touch it, feel it, play with all the knobs. I'll give them rides if they want. It's just, it's, it's one of those trucks where you need to experience it. It's not just meant to look at. It's meant to drive and touch and kick and scream at and smell. And you can even eat in this thing. How many classic cars with an interior, with a brand new interior do you get to eat in? Nobody eats in these cars anymore. Well, my kids don't, but we <laughs> do. My wife and I, we eat all the time in this car. Don't tell my kids. <laughs> But it's, it's really fun. It's an experience. It's a family car. It's meant to do everything that a normal car can do. It's got a modern chassis. It's got modern disc brakes, uh, power steering. Everything's modern. So it's safe. It handles good. It just looks old. That's all. It's fun. It's got six seat belts. So you can fit six people in here. Probably a little one in the middle, you know, because, you know, it's it's got a big hump. But it's a fun car to drive. It really is. It's just, you can see I'm driving it with one hand most of the time. It's really easy to do. That's 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 illegal. I wouldn't promote that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Kidding.
So one of the things that uh, makes this unique is I have the original gas pedal. It came with the original gas pedal, but with an LS3, you have to use a drive-by wire throttle. So I had to convert the old gas pedal to make it work on the Camaro drive-by wire mechanics. And that with the original brake pedal, I like that setup. It looks as original and authentic as you can get it, really. So everybody puts their stereo in the glove box, and that's totally fine. But when it's in there, you can't use it. And I don't really like using the regular remotes that the stereo comes with. So what I've done is I've taken a little diode that's a transmitter. And when you close this, it fits up against where the stereo receives the sound. It goes underneath the dash. And there's a little receiver right here. I don't know if you can see it. Really tiny little receiver I've hidden down there. That receives the signal from the steering wheel. I've mounted a little remote on the steering wheel. I know it's not authentic and original looking, but it's as hidden away as I can get it and make it still look original. So it works. Now you can drive hands off or hands on. I don't know which one you put it. Is it hands on? Free. Hands free. I can adjust all the stereo. I can make phone calls and everything from this remote right here. And it's hidden as much as possible. The original stereo is still here. It doesn't work, but I love the way it looks. So I didn't ever want to change that. As far as speakers, we have four speakers, one in each door on all four doors. And then there's two 10 inch subs underneath the rear seat. Sounds pretty good if you, uh, sounds pretty good to me. I'm an old man and I've lost a lot of hearing, so I have to turn it up really loud. <laughs> so it's got AC and it's still a work in progress. I've taken this panel and I've just kind of put cheesy little markers on there to know how to adjust the heat and the AC. This was originally how I turned on the AC. Um, but <laughs> I've, I've now it'll be for something else. But it's got four central vents, two on each side. The two ones that are in the middle, they can shoot over into the back to kind of give the a AC towards the back. All the gauges work. Um, the, right now, they're just basic gauges. I wanted the manual mechanical odometer, which is hard to find. So that had to be adapted to the 6L80 transmission, which is electronic. So I have an adapter underneath that changes an electronic signal into a mechanical signal with a motor. Uh, it's a pretty nice setup. It's not extremely accurate. I've adjusted it a few times to make it work, but it's pretty cool. Um, the steering column is an I did it steering column. I retrofitted an old Chevy steering wheel because International steering wheels are really hard to find. So I've taken that. I adjusted some of the some of the knobs on it a little bit. I put a international harvester logo in the middle of the steering wheel. That's not new old stock. <laughs> that is just my my get up on that. All the windows and doors roll up really nice. It's mostly new glass. If I didn't replace it, it was replaced by a previous owner, so none of it's original glass anymore. Um, the AC works really well, and it's got a central armrest that's got a couple cup holders in it. It does the job. Really nice interior. I love this leather. It's a distressed leather, and it's really nice. It smells like a baseball glove in here. It's too bad that video can't capture that, but it smells like a brand new baseball glove. It's really cool. Um, the back seats are the same. They're nice, they're comfortable. They're kind of contoured a little bit. So it's a nice ride for a long trip. It works out really good. Um, I've got as much on the headliner as I could to keep it quiet and quiet down the ride. It's got leather on the, on the top. And uh, it, it's, it's a pretty quiet ride for 
you know, for being an old truck. I mean, these were tractors. And so the old doors, they just, they have such a big gap in them that you can stick your finger through them when they're closed. So I've really taken a lot of time putting on door molding and trim and trying to quiet it down. It's still a work in progress. I got a lot more to go on that to try and get these doors sealed up, but it's a lot quieter than when it first started, that's for sure. So the rear view mirrors on each side are different. And for some reason, I love that. This one is full, top to bottom. It goes the whole way above and below the window. If you look over here on this side, this one's a halfy only goes halfway up so they were on the truck when I got it I added a few support bars because it just wiggled so much when you're driving but it works perfect I love these things I love the non matching style it's great so these fenders are custom made um, the only way to get this thing to lay flat on the ground with 20s 20 inch wheels is I had to add a little bit to the fender and I didn't want to. I love the original fenders of this. I think it's such a classic look, but it was kind of the best option that I could do was to put these fenders where they're at and make them as subtle as possible to match the original body lines. The original hood has a gap in it like this. So we tried to match the gap all the way to the fenders and tried to make it look as subtle as possible. So a lot of purists are gonna hate me for it, and I know, and believe me, I am not a big fan of doing it, but it's the only international I know that can probably lay on the ground with 20s just because of that. So it was kind of the only way to do it, and I got it to where it was about three quarters of an inch from laying on the ground, and it just, just didn't work and I was almost happy with that but had to go and make it lay all the way on the ground. The bumper is off of a C10. It's just a basic bumper that's cut and narrowed to kind of fit the truck a little bit better. Um, the front grill is aluminum so that's why you don't see much rust on that front grill area. That's an aluminum piece as well as the rockers panels. The rockers on the side here are aluminum, so they don't rust. So International did some things that are really cool. This whole step right here is aluminum and it doesn't rust, which is really cool. I love that. So I found an International Harvester ashtray and put it into this seat. It wasn't original to this seat. Uh, it was missing a handle, so I put on a little uh, socket for the handle, but inside it's wired for USB. So you can hook up four USB. So my kids in the back with their phones, they can have power going to it while we're driving. So it's kind of a little hidden secret, but it works out really good. And I haven't heard any complaints from them yet. So uh, it must be a winner. <laughs> so the bed's been raised to accommodate for the suspension and everything going on the ground. I came up with a design with uh, my fabricator, my chassis guy, that we could get the most bed usage out of it. And so it's a very minimalized where it will slam on the ground style, but I still have a pretty usable bed, if you can see in here. Um, and it's the original, as you can see, all the holes and everything. So what I've done here is I've just added a little couple of things it's a toolbox and it holds tools obviously, but obviously if you had a regular toolbox, it would hit and it wouldn't open up the right way. So I've put the hinges onto the back so you can open it up and you can pull things out and it holds, you know, just basic essentials. Your basic tools works pretty good though. It's got magnets that hold it down so it won't fly up while it's on the freeway. So it pulls down pretty good, stays there. And then for filling it up with gas, obviously it's got a brand new modern tank and with a modern tank and the LS3 and all the computer, it needs to have a sealed uh, gas lid in it. 
So what I've done is I've concealed it in this old gas can. So this is on a hinge and it opens up and it's on magnets. And then the regular gas cap and gas filler is in here. It just takes regular 91 octane gas filler up. And then, cause if you don't have a sealed gas cap, it'll give you an engine code error. So this is just an old gas can I cut up. I tried to trim it off the bottom so that you can't see how it opens. It's got magnets that hold it closed. So it really seals itself shut when it's closed. And, uh, yeah. and yeah, you know, gas can is where you would put gas. That's why I didn't make the toolbox where the gas can goes. I, I put them what people would think is logical. I think that worked out pretty good because if anybody wants to fill up my gas, they would come here first and go, hmm, let me unscrew this and see if we can put it in there. And I tried so hard to get it to line up, but this doesn't seal. There was no way of doing it. It just doesn't work. So it's as close as you can get to the real thing, but it works. Got gas in there and, and then you're off. And you can go on down the road, just driving along. So Sasquatch obviously is uh, very rarely seen, if at all. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Sasquatch. People think they've seen it, but they really have it. <laughs> so Sasquatch is a name that my family and I came up with because this thing's pretty rare, just like the real Sasquatch. Nobody knows if they really seen it or not. Um, I'm not going to go there because that's a whole nother show, but, and it's on Discovery Channel. But anyway, this thing is kind of rare, so I don't want to call it a unicorn because that's a really fluffy term that I don't like, and you'll never hear me say it again. But, so we called it Sasquatch, and I like that name. It fits the truck. It's dirty, grungy, it looks like it's been out in the forest for years, and it's probably never showered, well, it hasn't showered since I've had it, so it's really like a Sasquatch, but it smells good inside. So it's an LS3 out of a 2014 Camaro SS, about 400 horse, and um, fits in there nicely. It's the nice thing about old trucks is uh, engines fit really nice. The horn is off of a 50s truck. My next door neighbor owned gas stations in the 50s and he had a bunch of delivery trucks and tow trucks and he actually gave me that horn and that is running straight off the air tank at 200 PSI. So it is a monster sound. I even have it valved down to half. I have half of it bleeding off into a T just so that it's not so loud. And it still wakes you up. Should we try it? <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Jeez.